Hey everyone, welcome back to Filipino Time. Today we have our special guest, Doc Kio. Thank you for joining us, Doc. Thank you, Ben. And, uh, well, Doc Gio is a spine surgeon, um, a practical shooter, and he says soon to be a diver. But most of all, he's an avid watch collector. So let's start off with Gio's first piece, uh, the Oris BC4. Yes, it's a BC4. Yeah, tell us about this piece. Uh, Fed, this is a uh, Oris BC4 with a movement caliber uh, 7750. Um, I think the 7750 is really popular among uh, Swiss chronographs. They use okay. the movement uh, virtually, virtually in every uh, Swiss chrono in the market. So this particular watch is uh, special to me because um, I've had it through residency, so it had spills of blood <laughs> human fluids uh, <clears throat> what else uh, virtually through my training as an orthopedic surgeon but this is not the original strap you yes, changed it already i changed it i changed it it has full of scratches so from banged up na oh it was posture. on a metal bracelet it was on a metal bracelet okay so this is what i call a residency beater watch wow okay and is there any special feature on this watch that made you decide to make this as a milestone watch for you? Um, before, when I got this uh, way back 2008, okay. I think, um, the thing back then were the U-boats. Okay, the, uh, so the size. Yeah, the U-boats and the Panerize. Okay. But, uh, we don't have money for that. So, this one, maybe I saved up for this for a couple of months and then I got it. So this is a little bit large, but I like the 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 cushion case yeah. and the large the, the, the yes. tall the tall watch uh, profile profile that it gives. Yeah. So this one I will definitely not sell. Okay. Definitely. And next we have this beautiful another aviation piece. Yes, it is. Yeah. So this one is a Zin, and um, well, you know it's beautiful with the gray and the black. They call it. Uh, I think they call it the anthracite gray. Oh, okay. Anthracite gray. So tell us about this one. This one, I've been meaning to get the Zin watches because of their over-engineered uh, um, slogan. Okay. It's because if it's when you when you say it's German, yes. like the BMWs, the Porsche, the the, the Mercedes Benz, everything is over engineered yes. for specifications, for their specifications. So I saw this locally at the shop, and then so I go the gray, the gray dial with the gray insert just looks really really nice. And the and bracelet then, too, the quality of this steel that they use here. Mm, it's regular 316 medical grade okay. stainless steel, but um, one of the technologies behind it is they did a special treatment for the metal. They call it the tegument, tegmented, it's tegmented uh, steel, wherein they harden the superficial part okay. of the steel to make it less prone to scratches. Okay. So, so how is it held up? So it looks good. Um, yeah, um, I've, I've used this for a couple of times already. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so I think the tegument thing is good. Now, one more thing, um, since it's over-engineered, they say it's yeah. over-engineered. They, they did the uh, special dehumidifying technology on it. Okay. The argon, they, they say... Argon the, gas? The argon gas, the humid, the humidifying technology because since it's an aviation watch um, it is subjected to to um, below zero temperatures okay. so um, they wanted less fogging okay so everything is legible at uh, 
high altitude. High altitude flights. So I would imagine that a servicing of this watch would be quite expensive. I think so. Yeah. But um, um, the website um, compared it to ready regular mechanical watches, where they they say keep on servicing your watch every five years. Okay. I think they they recommend servicing this for around ten. Ten years. Ten years. Ten years. So we go not bad. Yeah. So we go really nice. And look, that it has that heft. Yes. With the, the nice deployant. With the uh, I think it's engineer like bracelet. And it's interesting to see I just noticed now these small screws on the bezel, no? Mm, Very interesting. Yeah. Um I I don't know why they put them there, but <laughs> over engineering. Yeah, over <laughs> <laughs> Just to be safe, let's add screws. And I think um one of the 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 over engineered uh, stuff that they say about this is they have this thing called the diabout technology. Okay. So for regular mechanical watches, they when they when you service it or if it came out of the factory, of course it's oiled and everything is uh, lubricated. Yes. They make parts that don't need lubrication. I see. So that's another thing. So no lubrication, no oil, definitely no moisture inside. Okay. So, pilot's watch. Yeah, yeah. So that's two. Now, if we go to the to an astronaut's watch, which I know Gio has a story to share about this uh, beautiful Hesalite manual speedy. <laughs> uh -huh. Yes. Uh, of course, apart from the history behind it being the moon watcher, and they used it as a moon, yeah. So, um, I, well, well, that's it. <laughs> Actually, that's it. That's it. Uh, because of the history, I wanted to get the moon watch. Okay. You know, be, um, maybe the child inside me wanted to be like an astronaut. So yeah. When you wear this. So they say, right, that ninety nine percent or ninety eight percent of moon watches never go to the moon. But Gio here has taken his watch at least to NASA. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I, we, my, my wife and I planned the trip uh, to Cape Canaveral like uh, two years ago. So I said, I think this is the chance to bring the moon watch to NASA. <laughs> so um, this is the new uh, Speedy. Okay. It has the caliber 1861, mm -hmm. if I, that's correct. So... Kind of a grail watch for me. Oh, sorry. So I noticed for the last three pieces, we've been looking a lot of at Chronos. Do you actually use your Chronos to time anything? No, I don't. No. It's just a matter of me wanting to be a desk a pilot, desk an diver, or a desk driver. Young <laughs> reason, <laughs> but I like Chronos because of the the sub dials. Okay. The sub -dials. Right, and of course now we have another milestone—a beautiful sea dweller. Of course, we all know this uh, is one of the pieces which there's no uh, side gloves, which no a lot of people like. And yeah. I think it's also because they couldn't fuse the the side gloves on properly, unlike the newer ones now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is a milestone watch of mine. Before I turned forty, I wanted to like I wished for a. Rolex, you know? so story behind this is that uh, when I was ready to buy a Rolex, I was looking to submariners, the modern ones and the vintage ones. Uh, the Sea Dweller was at the back of my mind. Okay. Because I see the Sea Dwellers are really, really big. Yes. Really, really big and overwhelming in the wrist. Yes, yes. But of course, uh, well, it's a Rolex. Yeah. <laughs> so when I went to see this, I said, oh, this is under the radar. It looks very much like the Submariner. And then when I wore it... It fits perfectly on you. Yeah, and it, the it's taller than the Submariner. And it's like the baby brother of the Submariner, of the Submariner that is technically better <laughs> than the Submariner. <laughs> okay. No, so it's less popular, but I think technically better since it can handle more, like I think twice or thrice the depth of the submariner. Yes, yes. 
So um, I also like the tapered lugs. Yes. Compared to the maxi cases. Oh, yes. The, though the maxi cases are really really nice. It yes. screams Rolex. Yeah. Uh, this one. It's a more sub subtle. More subtle. Enough. Yeah. Subtle Rolex. Even even the the letterings, you you wouldn't you wouldn't actually uh, recognize it if you're not uh, that keen into the Rolex. Yes. Yes. Um, you mentioned to me that you purchased this piece in Hong Kong. Yes, I did. I did. I did purchase this piece in Hong Kong, in one of their uh, establishments that uh, the, that sell secondhand, secondhand uh, Swiss. Actually, everything like yeah. Megas, Rolexes, EPs, uh, everything, everything. You no, know, so I got it with uh, certificates. No tags, mm -hmm. no, uh, but no, no box. So I only got it with the certificate. So I wouldn't mind. Okay. So there. <laughs> and oh, the, sorry. Yeah. Um, since this is a, a grill watch for me too, I would wish next time to get its predecessor, the, oh, okay. the triple six. Okay. The triple six. Uh, the triple six is a. Uh, I think yun lang yung chance na makakuha ko ng birth year Rolex. Okay. So, triple six na seed dweller. So, I like that. Well, thanks for sharing that. So, uh, looks like Hong Kong, as soon as the mess is over, watch out for Doc Gio. No. <laughs> <laughs> and this one is very interesting. I know Doc Gio has a lot to tell us about this. Bulova Accutron. Um, it, it, it also has the triple six. So, I was asking him earlier if it's considered as a devil diver, but he gave me another answer, and it was more interesting because he's going to explain to us about the movement. Yeah, um, this is a Belova Accutron snorkel, uh, rated to two hundred meters. That's equivalent to six hundred sixty-six feet. Okay. So they they use the six hundred sixty-six feet, maybe for advertisement. No? So that's why the moniker Devil Diver. Yeah. Though it's not the Devil Diver that um, enthusiasts really know about because mm -hmm. it's, it has a different uh, case. Now, what's interesting about the Accutron is its uh, historical significance to the watch industry. Okay. Because I think, from what I remember, it was the first uh, movement electronically made um, the thing that is interesting about this is that back then um, during the 60s um, the sweep hands frequency or movement beats like two beats per second the sweep hands of the Accutron beats 360 times so I don't know how they regulated it but I think they advertised it to two seconds per day okay so that's how accurate it was that maybe because that's why it's named the Accutron mm. Accu electronic watch yeah you yeah. Know? and back then there there was there was this uh, rave about uh, uh, the space age thing okay no um, Accutron astronaut yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. robot sci-fi <laughs> yeah. Star Trek no so so they want everybody wanted to have an Accutron. I think for a while back in seventy three, from what I read, they have sold like four million of these Accutrons wow. worldwide. So I rarely see them, but uh, it's really it's a really interesting watch. I wanted, or actually, I am hunting presently for the for the. The, the famous Accutron, the Space View. Okay. The Space View because it's a see-through watch where you can see the tuning fork. You okay. can see the tuning fork. Um, and one thing that is uh, interesting about the movement is that um, the tuning fork vibrates to regulate the time okay. instead of using the traditional uh, escapement, the balance wheel that re regulates the time, powers it. This one is, although it's powered by battery, it's regulated electronically by the tuning fork. Mechanism. So enablers, if you were listening, once again, PM is the key. 
<laughs> and I was asking Doc, apart from buying his watches from local ADs from Hong Kong, um, we want to give a shout out to our friends at the SWCP Marketplace, especially the Sunday. The Sunday Marketplace. Yep. <laughs> yeah, you know. That's I, where I got this one. Yeah. The Sunday Marketplace. I get so excited sometimes when it, when it's on on Saturday night. Yeah, oh, just before <laughs> Sunday, no? Yeah. <laughs> so, guys, I hope you enjoyed some of Doc Gio's Swiss collection. And stay tuned for our part two when we talk about the real madness behind Doc Gio's Seiko obsession. <laughs> Thank you, Doc. Thank you, Ben. Thanks, guys. Yeah.